In this presentation, an intraarticular fracture of the distal radius will be treated with a 2.4 variable angle LCP volar two column distal radius plate. The objectives of this presentation are to identify the clinical indications for pulmar plating, to show the principles of the variable angle locking system, the patient position and the approach, the instruments needed, and the reduction and fixation of the fracture. The indications for pulmar plates in articular fractures are a hyperextended pulmar fragment and or loss of pulmar buttress, reconstruction of the radiocarpal joint, Collis type fractures, and Smith or reverse Barton's fractures. Be aware that through a pulmar approach, visualization of the joint surface is not possible as opening of the capsule would lead to some carpal instability. The variable angle locking screw and the standard locking screw are shown. The head of the variable angle locking screw has a rounded shape, whereas the head of the standard locking screw has a conical shape. The design of the plate hole in the head of the plate allows the variable angle locking screw to be inserted up to 15 degrees off axis in all directions. The variable angle locking screw can also be inserted at a fixed angle into the threaded portion of the combi plate holes. The standard locking screw can only be inserted at a fixed angle and only in the threaded portion of the combi plate holes. To drill off-axis holes at the desired angle, the funnel-shaped end of the universal variable angle locking drill guide is used. The drill guide tip is inserted coaxially into the cloverleaf design of the plate hole. The tip of the drill guide must remain fully seated in the plate hole while drilling. The funnel of the drill guide allows the angle of the 1.8mm drill bit to be varied as much as 30 degrees. The fixed angle end of the drill guide only allows the drill bit to follow the nominal trajectory of the locking hole. The plate is available in a left and right version. For the pulmar approach, the patient is placed in a supine position with the arm abducted and fully supinated. The C arm must be placed to obtain adequate images when needed. The landmarks are located and marked. Usually it is easy to palpate the radial styloid. Here is the flexor carpi radialis tendon. This is the radial artery. A longitudinal incision is made slightly radial to the flexor carpi radialis tendon. Here is the flexor carpi radialis, which has its own sheath, separate from the other flexor tendon sheaths. First, the tendon sheath of the flexor carpi radialis is opened. The next layer would be the forearm fascia. Now the forearm fascia is split, and here is the muscle belly of the flexor. The muscle belly of the flexor is moved towards the ulna. This is the radial border of the pronator quadratus. Here is the radial shaft. This is the pronator quadratus, and now we dissect up toward the radial styloid. This is the Nelson's watershed line of the radius. Now we dissect towards the pulmar ulna side. The next step is to release the pronator quadratus from its radial insertion. Later, two stitches are placed to reattach the pronator quadratus at this level. Usually, it is not possible distally. 
here are the fibres of the brachioradialis tendon which can be released. Step by step, the fracture becomes visible. By placing the retractor this way, the pronator also protects the median nerve. This is the shaft component. Here is the radial styloid. And this is the pulmar ulna fragment. It is important to leave the pulmar wrist capsule intact to avoid devascularization of the fracture fragments and destabilization of the pulmar wrist ligament. The instruments needed to insert cortex screws are the 2.4 universal drill guide, the 1.8 mm drill bit, the depth gauge, and the short T8 star drive screwdriver shaft and handle. The instruments needed to insert the locking screws are the threaded 2.4 LCP drill sleeve, the 2.4 universal variable angle LCP drill sleeve, the 1.8 mm drill bit, the short T8 star drive screwdriver shaft, and the 0.8 newton meter torque limiting attachment with handle. The 1.25 mm plate reduction wire with small stop is useful to hold the plate in position on the bone. This is the three part fracture model the radial column fragment the intermediate column fragment and the radial shaft. The intermediate column fragment and radial column fragment are reduced by hand to create an articular block. The large pointed reduction forceps are applied across the articular block to hold the reduction. The articular block is in an extension deformity due to the metaphysial defect. The plate is positioned on the shaft and the articular block is reduced to the plate. The 1.25 mm plate reduction wire with small stop is inserted through the proximal K wire hole to temporarily fix the plate to the bone. The first screw to be inserted is a cortex screw applied through the elongated hole in the plate shaft. The 1.8 mm drill bit is used for a 2.4 mm locking or cortex screw. The 2 mm drill bit would be used for a 2.7 mm cortex screw. The order of screw insertion in the shaft and metaphysis may vary depending on the fracture pattern and reduction technique. The depth is measured with the depth gauge. A 2.4 mm cortex screw is inserted with the T8 star drive screwdriver. The joint block is reduced to the plate. K wires are inserted through the block into the shaft to hold it in the correct position. The extension deformity is now corrected. The plate position should be checked under image intensification. If the plate position needs to be adjusted, the plate reduction wire is removed. The cortex screw is loosened to allow for adjustment. When the correct position of the plate has been achieved, the cortex screw is retightened. To fix the plate to the bone in the correct position, a locking screw is inserted through the most proximal plate hole. The threaded 2.4 LCP drill sleeve is inserted into the threaded portion of the plate hole. The 1.8mm drill bit is used to create the screw hole. The depth of the hole can be read directly from the marks on the drill and the scale on the drill guide. The depth of the hole can be checked with the depth gauge. The appropriate length 2.4mm variable angle locking screw is introduced using the 0.8 newton meter torque limiting attachment and the screwdriver shaft.
the next screw will be inserted off-axis in one of the plate holes in the head of the plate. To drill off-axis holes at the appropriate angle, the funnel-shaped end of the universal variable angle locking drill guide is used. The funnel of the drill guide allows the angle of the 1.8mm drill bit to be varied as much as 30 degrees. The drill bit angle is verified under the image intensifier to ensure that the desired angle has been achieved. Care must be taken that the drill bit does not enter the radiocarpal joint which would leave the screw in an intra-articular position. If necessary, re-drilling at a different angle and verification under image intensifier control are done. The depth is measured with the depth gauge. The appropriate length 2.4mm variable angle locking screw is introduced using the 0.8 Newton meter torque limiting attachment and the screwdriver shaft. To insert a variable angle locking screw at a fixed angle, the 1.8mm drill bit is used with the fixed angle end of the drill guide. This end of the drill guide only allows the drill bit to follow the trajectory of the locking hole. The depth of the hole can be read directly from the marks on the drill and the scale on the drill guide, in this case 16 mm The appropriate length locking screw is inserted. The remaining plate holes in the head of the plate are filled as necessary. The reduction forceps and the K-wires are now removed. The articular congruency is restored and the extension deformity is corrected. This presentation has demonstrated the clinical indications for pulmar plating, the principles of the variable angle locking system, the patient position and the approach, the instruments needed, and the reduction and fixation of the fracture.